Hello and welcome back. Um, in this session, we will look at the part two of your uh, AWS scenario based uh, questions. In the last session, we looked at um, 10 common AWS scenario based questions along with the answers as well. Uh, those were some really interesting questions that you can definitely expect uh if uh, you're showing experience so you know generally whenever we are showing any experience uh scenario based questions are very common and uh, uh, in this session we will be covering um, another 10 uh, scenario based questions so this will be our part two so the question that you can expect over here is you have a web application which is hosted on an EC2 instance. So basically, we have a web application which is running on an EC2 instance. Now, how can you ensure that this application is highly available and also it is fault tolerant? So we have deployed an application. Now, how can we make sure that this application is highly available and it is also fault tolerant? All right. So how can we achieve this? Well, uh, what we can do is to make sure that the application is highly available and also it is fault tolerant uh, one thing that we can do is we can deploy this application across multiple availability zones so mainly from the high availability and from from the fault tolerance perspective we can make sure that this application we are deploying it across multiple availability zones so when we are launching our instances we have to make sure that we launch uh, multiple instances and these instances are running across multiple availability zones. So here, let's say I'll go to instances and we'll start launching the instances. Now, what we have to do is we have to make sure that this subnet, the availability zone, we are manually selecting this availability zone um, as to, you know, wherever you want to deploy your application. So let's say we will deploy one of the instance in US East 1A. Likewise, we will launch one more instance in a different availability zone. So that's one way which can uh, make sure our application is highly available. Now, this way, if there's any issue with, let's say, US East 1A, we still have our instance uh, running in US East 1B where the application is deployed. So the application is available for the users. And we can also make use of your auto scaling groups to handle the scalability of your instances as to when to scale up and scale down your EC2 instances. So for this, what we can do is we can create an auto scaling group. Uh, we can specify our condition as to when to scale up or when to scale down, maybe based on the CPU utilization or based on the um, uh, network utilization as to when uh, the instances sh should be increased. We can define that by making use of your auto scaling groups. The next question we have is explain the differences between Amazon RDS and Amazon DynamoDB. Well, both of these, uh, both of both the services are your database services. Uh, however, your Amazon RDS is a relational database service. So RDS, as, as it stands, it's a relational database service while your DynamoDB is a no SQL database. OK, so RDS is a SQL database. DynamoDB is a no SQL database. So let's say we will open up your RDS service and then we'll also open up your DynamoDB. So RDS over here, it's your structured query language. It's your uh, uh, SQL database and your DynamoDB is a no SQL database. It is non-structured database service. So RDS is suitable for structured data. So whenever your data, uh, you wanna structure your data, like have proper rows and columns, then we can make use of your RDS and it supports your SQL queries. Like, you know, we can we can uh, run your SQL queries to fetch the data from the database while your DynamoDB is designed for your non-structured data. So no SQL, that's basically non-structured query language. So here your data will be unstructured or it is semi-structured data with automatic scaling and it is a fully managed service. So the other main difference we have between your RDS and Dynamo DynamoDB is that your DynamoDB is a managed service. AWS manages the service for you. But with your RDS, we will be managing the database. So we'll have to launch a DB instance and then we have to start managing that DB instance uh, as per our requirement. The next question we have is your EC2 instances are exp experiencing performance issues due to high traffic. 
how can you mitigate this issue so there's a high network traffic which is uh, causing performance issues with your ec2 instances so how will you uh, take care of this so you can create an amazon vpc which is your virtual private cloud with the appropriate network architecture so here uh, basically what we can do is we have to uh, create our vpc and make sure it is highly available so have uh, the right number of subnets the firewalls the routings and everything we have to take care of that and that will take care of the network performance for us so here we'll have to we'll end up creating a vpc the respective subnets the route tables and all those components uh, we can also implement your cloudfront service which is your content delivery network so your cdn so your uh, cache basically we can implement that by making use of your cloud front and then we can also uh, consider using the load balancer to distribute the traffic so instead of sending all the traffic to um, a particular instance we can deploy multiple instances and have these instances behind the load balancer so the load balancer will take care of distributing the traffic efficiently so that will uh, help us mitigate the high network uh, traffic issues that we might have the next question we have is you want to monitor the performance of your ec2 instances and also set up automated actions based on metrics so how can you achieve this so basically we have uh, an ec2 instance now we want to monitor this ec2 instance and also based on certain metrics like your cpu utilization or your network utilization we want to take some actions how can we do that now in aws whenever we talk about monitoring any of your resources or your services a amazon cloudwatch is the service that we have so amazon cloudwatch is your monitoring service which can help you to monitor your ec2 met um, metrics now by default this is enabled so if you you know if you launched any instance if you go to that instance under monitoring you should be able to see your metrics as to your cpu utilizations your network in network out your disk reads disk writes all these metrics will be available for you now we can monitor this and we can also create an alarm which is to you know uh, specifying a condition uh, a threshold and whenever it goes above the threshold we can take some action so you can set up cloudwatch alarm to trigger automated actions such as scaling instances in or out based on your metric threshold so using this cloudwatch will be creating an alarm which will monitor your ec2 instances and whenever the alarm threshold is reached it will take the necessary actions for us so uh, let's say we'll we'll go to the cloudwatch service over here so let's go to the cloudwatch so that's my cloudwatch service so what we can do here is we can um, simply create an alarm all right so we'll go to alarms and we can create an alarm we can select the metric so in our case we want to monitor your ec2 and then you can select the instance which instance do you want to monitor so in my case this is the only instance i have this is a current instance that is running so here you can see this um, instance now you can select which metric you want to monitor so let's say i want to monitor my cpu utilization all right so this becomes my metric so we'll select this metric uh, you can define your condition so whenever it is greater than or equal to let's say 80 percentage all right and then you can define your uh, alarm so it should go change to the in alarm state and then what action you want to take so you want to send out a notification or you want to scale up your instances or take some ec2 action or some systems manager action you can define that by making use of your cloud so that way you can take care of the metrics and then take some actions as well the next question we have is your application needs to securely store sensitive configuration information uh, what aws service should you use so basically here uh, we have some sensitive information and we want to store that on aws so which service can we use so for this we can utilize your systems manager service and under the systems manager service we have this option called parameter store we can make use of that to store your uh, sensitive information so here if you go to the systems manager under the systems manager 
um, we have this option called uh, parameter store. We can use this parameter store to store any of your sensitive information and it also supports encrypting the uh, data so you can give a name to it and then you can you know you want to go with the standard tier or the advanced tier and what is it is it a string is it a secure string you can fill in all these details and you can give the value like let's say uh, a password to your database or anything it can be anything so we can make use of this to store your sensitive information and then we can um, make this information available to your ec2 instances securely so we can um, call this information that is stored in the parameter store from the ec2 instance and then the ec2 instance can use it for whatever the use case that you are looking for the next question we have is you need to implement data encryption for your s3 buckets how can you achieve this? so basically here we have s3 buckets and you want to uh, enable encryption for this s3 buckets how can you achieve that well you can enable s3 server side encryption which is your sse so you have three options you can use the sse s3 which is your s3 provided encryption keys you can make use of the kms service you can also make use of the uh, customer provided encryption keys to encrypt the data in your s3 bucket so as sse kms provides additional key management and audit control so you can either choose between your s3 provided keys or the kms keys based on your uh, uh, requirement now how do we um, um, enable this you can choose your s3 bucket any s3 bucket that uh, um, you are um, uh, looking for so let's say i'll go to this s3 bucket you can go to properties and under the properties you should be able to see this encryption option so you can edit this and you can enable this and you can choose so you want to use the uh, s3 provided encryption keys or the kms and there's a new option called uh, dual layer server side encryption with the kms so you can choose how uh, what option you want to use to encrypt the data in the s3 bucket and post that all the data that you have in the s3 bucket will be encrypted the next question we have is um what is aws elastic beanstalk and how does it differ from um EC2 instances. So Elastic Beanstalk is one service and your EC2 instance is another service that we have. So Elastic Beanstalk is mainly a platform as a service. All right. So we can use this Elastic Beanstalk as a pass platform as a service. And this helps us to simplify the application deployment and the management of your application. So let's say we will open up the Elastic Beanstalk service. So the advantage of this is that you don't have to worry about setting up the infrastructure. All right. So here you can click on create application and what do you want to run? So I want, let's say I want to run a web server. You can give it a name and then your environment name. And you know, we are going with the managed platform and then what type of application is it? So let's say it's a Java application and then you can upload your application code. All right, so you can either upload it from your local machine or you can put it to the S3 bucket and uh, you can give the URL and you can specify your uh, resources. So how many instances you want, the database and all those things. And your Elastic Beanstalk will take care of creating all those resources for you and they deploy the application for it. So that becomes your platform as a service. Whereas your EC2 is your infrastructure as a service. So with your EC2, you are responsible for uh, manage everything. So you will have to launch the instance. You will have to deploy the application, the management of the application, the management of the EC2 instance. You will be responsible for everything. So EC2 is your infrastructure as a service and it requires more manual configuration the next question we have is your company has a legacy application that requires windows server uh, how can you run windows workloads on aws so uh, you know we have a windows application and uh, we need to run this windows application on the aws platform how can we do that well for this what we can do is we can launch an ec2 instance but then we can choose the windows ami when we are launching our instances 
uh, we have to make sure that uh, we are selecting the windows ami that way we get a windows ec2 instance and then we can log into this windows instance and uh, uh, deploy our windows application all right so you can use the amazon ec2 instances with windows server as your operating system enabling you to run windows workloads on aw so we have to make sure we are using the windows ami and launch the ec2 instance and post that we get a um, uh, windows virtual machine and we can start launching our application on that windows operating system the next question we have is explain the difference between an amazon s3 bucket policy and an iam policy now policies are nothing but your permissions right so we have two types of policies we have the s3 bucket policy and then we also have the iam policy so we'll have to explain the difference between these two so your s3 bucket policy is also your permissions however this is restricted to the s3 bucket and it controls the access to the uh, uh, s3 buckets content whatever the data you have in the s3 bucket uh, we can control the um, uh, access to those data by making use of your uh, bucket policy so here we when we go to the s3 bucket um, you can select your uh, bucket where you want to control the uh, policy and then when you go to this permissions over here you can find your bucket policy and we can um, edit this we can define our policy again it's a json document and you can specify as to who can access the data in the s3 bucket uh, what they can do all those configurations can be done by making use of the s3 bucket policy so this is only for the s3 bucket whereas your iam policy um, is also your permissions but this is attached to your users or your groups or your roles and it defines uh, what these entities your users groups or roles what actions they can perform on the aws resources so this is basically access at the aws level so let's say we create an iam user all right now you can define the permission for this iam user by making use of the iam policies as to uh, they can launch an ec2 instance or they can create an s3 bucket we can define all those permissions by uh, making use of your um, iam policies the next question we have is uh, you want to ensure that your ec2 instances have the latest security patches and updates what aws service can help you with this so uh, you have your ec2 instances now we want to make sure that these ec2 instances always have the latest security patches and updates now how can we achieve this which aws service can we use to do this now again for this we can make use of your systems manager service so when we go to the systems manager we have an option called patch manager which can be used to manage your security patches and all those things so we can use this patch manager which helps us to automate the process of keeping your ec2 instances up to date with security updates and uh, patches so here you can see this patch manager we can make use of this to apply any security updates or any patches to your ec2 instances and you can also automate this all right so we we also the advantage of this is we can do this in bulk like multiple instances so that's basically what your systems manager service so here we can make use of the systems manager service that's all i have for this session so that's part two of your aws scenario based questions um, again we have covered uh, 10 um, uh, very interesting questions along with their answers that's all i have for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you like the video leave a like and please share the video